Good morning and welcome to Notre Dame. It is always nice to have you here with us. Today we celebrate Mass for a special intention and that special intention would be the intention of Mary Linneman who is one of our uh, viewers on video, obviously, uh, who has reached her 100th birthday. So congratulations Mary and would you all keep Mary in your prayers. Um, as I said, it's good to have you here with us. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, Unclean! Unclean! As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our responsorial psalm is, I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn, I turn to you, Lord, Lord in, in time of trouble, of trouble and you fill me with the joy of salvation. salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, 
Do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it. Be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Back in those days, leprosy was a terrible disease, actually. It's still a terrible disease, but it has been controlled now and it's much more treatable than it was back then. But the thing was, back then, they couldn't take a skin sample and put it under a microscope or anything like that because None of that had been invented yet. And so anyone who had some sort of skin problem might be in the early stages of leprosy. And so there were all sorts of rules and regulations. And we heard about some of them in our first reading, which was from the book of, the, of Leviticus. And um, so people who had a splotch or a blotch or a sore or a pustule or anything like that, that might be leprosy had to stay far away from everyone else. They had to rend their garments, which means they had to walk around in torn clothing. And they had to walk around yelling, unclean, unclean. Why? Because they didn't want this disease to be caught. And so you had to be separate from everyone else for the sake of the community. And the problem, the, there was another problem that went along with it. There was an understanding that if you were a good person, good things were going to happen to you. And likewise, if you were wicked, well, bad things would happen to you. So everybody took that bit of logic and said, well, if this person has been afflicted with leprosy, he must have done something wrong. And there was just an understanding that you must be sinful somehow. So you did something to deserve this. And so it be it was a horrible moment in someone's life to be found with leprosy. So, we come to the gospel, and that leper comes to Jesus. And he, kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. And when Jesus said, I do will it, be made clean, and touch the man, well, the man's life was restored to normal. Uh, it was clear that he wasn't 
guilty of any horrible crime. And Jesus let him know that, you know, he was somebody who was still a child of God, somebody who was still loved by the Lord, somebody who well, could return to his family and friends uh, with all of that misery behind him. And so it was a great and wonderful gift. Then Jesus does something that's he does a lot in the Gospel of Mark. Warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. See that you tell no one anything. Uh, that's called the messianic secret. And you know, all sorts of writers over the centuries have talked about the messianic secret. Why did Jesus always say, now don't tell anybody this, or don't you know, let anyone know? And there's a host of possible reasons. I always like the idea that Jesus didn't want to be seen as just a miracle worker or a magician who would walk around doing great and powerful deeds. He wanted really some people to understand that he was there out of compassion and then he was healing from a sense of compassion and that those healings were a sign that the Messiah had come. People didn't always understand that. But ultimately what Jesus would do was heal the great ill, the great wound, and that is the wound or the illness of our own guilt, our own sinfulness. He would come and die on the cross for us and rise again. And that ultimately was supposed to be the great sign. Now, even though he told this man not to let anybody know, what did he do? He went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the court abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. And that makes some sense. Now, I suppose if Jesus told us to keep something a secret, we ought to. However, the man had been touched by the hand of God and he just couldn't contain himself and he had to, had to broadcast the good news. So I think there are some lessons in this story. First of all, um, God doesn't want to just be known as some sort of miracle worker, uh, but instead we want to make sure that we have him as a constant presence in our lives. We want to make sure that we understand that he's not going to magically solve every ill, but he's going to be with us no matter what it is we face. That's the first thing. The second thing is we are supposed to be like that leper who was healed. You know, when we have an experience with God, or when we have an understanding about how wonderful God is, or when we come to some realization about how richly we've been blessed, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to be like that leper who then went out into the world and proclaimed it to everyone he met. That's how it's supposed to be with us. We do have moments of closeness with God. We have many reasons for joy in our relationship with God. And what we need to do is go forth and let people know how great and wonderful God is. I watch, you know, comedians online sometimes because it's nice to have a good laugh. And also, it's, I find it interesting to see how they make their jokes up and all the rest. Anyway, some of them knock the faith quite a bit, and that always kind of bothers me, because what's clear is they don't have a good understanding of what it is we believe. They think of God as this angry person sitting in heaven who looks at us in our imperfection and is filled with a profound sense of disappointment. And that's not what we believe at all. Now, is God disappointed when we sin? Yes. Uh, but how does God feel about us? He loves us. He loves us with every fiber of his being. That's what the life of God is about. And not only does he love us, even with our imperfections, but he loved us enough to send his son, and he loved us enough to die on the cross for us. That's the sort of God we have. And that is worth proclaiming. And it bothers me when people who don't believe have such a off-kilter uh, understanding of the nature of the Lord because the Lord isn't an angry God. The Lord is a compassionate God. The Lord is a forgiving God. The Lord is a, a loving God who loves us well, more than anything. And we need to make sure that we understand that, appreciate it, give thanks for it, celebrate it, and proclaim it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For our Holy Church and her mission to build the kingdom of God in our midst, may he continue to uphold us in this sacred work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may the Prince of Peace guide them in their work for justice, peace, and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are outcasts in our society or, feel, or people who feel alienated from others, may the Lord's enduring love embrace them in their vulnerability. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community of faith, may the sacramental graces we have received come alive in our every word and deed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Mary Linneman, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for her intentions, that as, as she celebrates her 100th birthday, uh, she is filled with oh, a sense of joy, a sense of thankfulness, and that God will continue to watch over, lead, and guide her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, may our merciful God bring them to everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all, please hear and answer these prayers we offer through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, and the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please pray with me this prayer so we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. So I always like to thank you for being here with us. Let's see. Uh, this coming Wednesday will be Ash Wednesday. Don't forget that is a day of fasting and abstinence. Um, other than that, I guess... Oh, I noticed today I... My energy level is a little bit more low than usual. See, what happened was I was with Ginger a few nights ago, and we, and we were playing with her favorite tennis ball. And uh, as I threw it down the hallway, she raced after it and let out a terrible screech. And she um, must have pulled something in her uh, back left leg. And anyway, so it's been a tough couple of days. She hasn't felt very well. As you can see, she's moving kind of slowly. And she's wanted to sleep next to me every night. And when I say next to me, I mean next to me. <laughs> so I'm used to sleeping alone. Well, anyway, so I've been waking up a lot. But she seems to be on the mend, and uh, she's returning to her normal, cheerful self. So anyway, uh, that's the story of Ginger and the story of us being tired. So I hope you have a good week. And I'll see you next Sunday. Without your blessed love that falls upon our hearts